everybody, welcome back to Medicine Easy Constructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. We're gonna get right into vaping. I've talked about vaping before. It's an important subject, especially right now. All of you have been watching the news. What I can tell you from the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control in this country, is that there are 380 confirmed cases and that there have been six deaths. Now, who knows if the vaping-induced lung injury is secondary to e-cigarettes or THC products or synthetic cannabinoids. But we know that vaping causes lung injury. But let's get into something else. What we need to talk about first is we gotta remind everyone how the lungs work. When you guys all take a deep breath in, air travels down your main pipe here, your trachea. That trachea breaks down into a right and left main pipe, which further break down into smaller pipes that are surrounded by muscle called bronchioles. That air is then conducted to a bunch of balloons stacked on top of one another, which are called alveoli. Now, when you blow up a balloon, just think about a balloon outside, right? It can be blue, yellow, red, whatever color it is. When you think about that balloon, that color is the lining. That's where the environment meets the bloodstream, okay? So again, when you're vaping, you are actually creating an aerosol by heating up a liquid. In other words, you're using a metal to heat up this liquid and creating an aerosol. When you are sucking down that aerosol, there are things that can happen. So we have to remember that this can cause some injury. And when you look at studies, cells get injured, specifically monocytes, which are a type of white blood cell that fights infection. They can get injured, and as they get injured, they increase the recruitment of other inflammatory cells to the area. What does that sound like? It sounds like asthma. Remember, asthma is an autoimmune disease that leads to inflammation around those pipes, around those bronchioles, that then can lead to bronchoconstriction. In fact, today, who I brought on camera with me to talk to is one of my friends, one of my buddies, lives in Los Angeles, filmmaker, hiker. His name is Nick. He vapes, and he's here to talk about it today. How you doing, Nick? Welcome to the show. Doing great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Killing it. So recently, I received a phone call from your loved one mm -hmm. who said, hey, Nick's not feeling very well. I mean, he's wheezing. He's having an exacerbation of his asthma. Tell me about that. Um, so sometimes I get allergies where I get some congestion in my nose. I get the post-nasal drip, settles in my chest, and I wake up kind of like... <sighs> This kind of sucks, but it's something I've grown up and kind of used to. I usually just take a hot shower or if I'm lucky enough to have some prednisone or some albuterol around, that always does the trick too. So uh, yeah, Jessica called and hooked, uh, hooked me up with uh, our doctor friend and got me some drugs. And they helped you, right? Yeah. So I think- Thank you. Anytime. I think what's important to remember is that, you know, Nick is genetically differently than me who's genetically, and I'm genetically different than my children pretty much. And so there are so many different types of genes in our body that can lead to certain pathologies. Some people have asthma like Nick, just like some people can have a reaction to vaping. Now, in this situation, it seems as if Nick vaping doesn't certainly help the situation, right? I, I definitely not, no. Yeah, and you, and you know that it doesn't help. Yeah, I would say, um... I could be wrong with this. I think that a lot of my asthma issues kind of um, went away. I'm not sure if it was kind of be, like going out of adolescence into adulthood. It also coincided with me smoke, starting to smoke weed, which I've heard can help asthma in a very counterintuitive. That might just be stoner talk, but um, <laughs> I've heard that and it, it seems right for me uh, just in terms of being able to work out for longer amounts of times and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I've made the transition not away from smoking, but I've included vaping so I can vape at work essentially. Um, and it's very convenient, but at the same time, I definitely realize that it doesn't help my lung capacity or anything like that. So you, so what I heard in your answer was that you used vaping to quit smoking cigarettes, is that correct? No, so I never smoke cigarettes. I smoke, um, my preferred way to smoke is a spliff, which is just a mixture of uh, tobacco and marijuana and, and, a, and a cigarette. Okay, all right. So you smoke kind of homemade cigarettes, which are kind yeah. of half marijuana. I'd say like 10% tobacco, 90% uh, marijuana, but yeah, I mean semantics. 
Okay. Have you ever smoked one of those and then had an immediate asthma exacerbation? Have you ever like just started coughing and been like, whoa? Um, I mean, I've coughed, but not in a sense where it feels like an asthma attack. It's just more kind of like, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's a, it's a different, it's a different reaction. Okay. And you also vape. Mm -hmm. Now, what kinds of things do you vape? Um, I smoke or I vape the Jewel. Mm -hmm. Got it right here. I've, uh, my, my preferred is the uh, the Virginia Tobacco 5% nicotine. Yeah, it yeah. does the trick for me. Okay. And does it say, I wonder, does it say how many milligrams of nicotine are in 5% nicotine strength? I have no idea about any of this stuff. All I know is it feels good in my in my brain. Because what I do know is that some of these electronic cigarettes and the Juul, they tend to have significantly more nicotine in them than a cigarette does. And in fact, it's been said, and who knows if this is true, that smoking a cartridge of Juul is like smoking 20 cigarettes. I've heard that as well, yeah. Or just in terms of the nicotine. So you're, you're not getting all the tar and all that other stuff, but you know. Who knows what you're getting. Right, because again, when you are using the Juul and you're heating up this liquid, who knows what kinds of products that you're having. In fact, recently, you know, the government has talked about banning flavors of electronic cigarettes. How do you feel about that? Um, as long as that flavor doesn't include Virginia tobacco, I'm fine with it. Um, no, I don't think it's the worst idea because, yeah, the flavors definitely seem like a very easy entry point for younger consumers so definitely not pro that um but yeah at the same time i don't want to see all the options go away just because there's seem to be some potential benefits i mean it's definitely still at a weird gray area where everyone's trying to figure out what's what yeah now you know you said something interesting because that you know some of my friends that vape you know we when we talk about it they never bring up things like younger consumers and so that was actually quite interesting. I'm glad you actually brought that up. Does that enter your mind at all, you know, thinking to yourself, well, here I am vaping? Because as, as we know, as a country, that the rates of vaping in high school and in elementary school are just skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. So is that something that would concern you if you, if you had a child? Um, but I don't understand the question, I guess. So when you vape around a child, do you try to hide it because you don't oh, want them to see you? Um, I probably should, but I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty shameless. But uh, you say you're shameless, but you literally said, unprovoked, I might add. Yeah. You literally said the younger... No, I, I, I guess I'm more of a do as I say, not as I do type of person, which uh, sounds like a horse... Shit. <laughs> so that's okay. You can say shit on this. I mean, this isn't yeah. rated. So if, let me ask you this question. You have nieces and nephews or you have loved ones that have nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. If they were, let's say 12 mm -hmm. and you caught them vaping one of your oh, products, yeah. what would you do? Take it away from them and tell on them and be like, yeah, I'd, I'd try to scare them a little bit. So why would you do that? to try to create a negative association in their brain with uh, smoking or vaping or any of that stuff. Cause it's, it's, you know, if someone chooses to do that as an adult, that's one thing, but you know, kids don't have the judgment or capacity to make those decisions. So it should be restricted. Right, so you are fully aware that you think, it sounds like you might even know that it, you don't think it's completely healthy. You don't think the product is oh, healthy. Oh no, I know, I know, I know. Not at all. And do you think that most people who vape feel that way? Um, I feel like some of the younger consumers have this idea in their head that it is a harmless form of smoking. Mm -hmm. um, I think anyone who is rational and realistic understands that there's certainly no net benefit to it, but maybe it's less harmful than other options. Now, you had said that Virginia tobacco is your fl favorite flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, with the banning of some of these flavors that may or may not happen, do you know why the flavoring is an issue? Um, scientifically? I think it, oh, scientifically, uh, it's probably some of the endorphins, but no, scientifically, I don't know anything. So most of the flavors are created by an aldehyde of some kind, whether it's a formaldehyde, like the cinnamon flavor is actually cinnamon aldehyde. And cinnamon aldehyde has actually been studied 
and it has shown that it causes injury to these white blood cells called, mo called monocytes. Mm -hmm. And monocytes end up secreting a certain cellular communication molecule called interleukin-8, which ends up recruiting a lot of different inflammatory cells to the area where... Popcorn lung? This is exposed. That's a good... So what he's bringing up when he says popcorn lung, popcorn lung is kind of like a common way of saying hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So as we talked about earlier, remember we were talking about breathing in air. So when you breathe in air, again, you've got your environment and your bloodstream meeting in your lung, right? So there are two organs in your body that are basically constantly exposed to the outside environment. One is your skin and two is your lung. So your lung is constantly exposed to the outside environment. So some of these products that you might breathe in, whether if you're in Southern California and you're digging a hole and you've got dirt and you don't have a mask on, you might breathe in some fungus that can create an allergic reaction in your lung and can lead to the formation of granulomas or the formation of, you know, extra inflammatory cells within that area that end up, you end up calcifying what is causing the allergy so it's no longer exposed in your body and you can develop things like popcorn lung. And again, you're right. So e-cigarettes, there are case reports of e-cigarettes causing popcorn lung, right? And causing different kinds of what I call, and you guys have heard me talk about it, interstitial lung diseases, which is inflammation within the lung. So it sounds like to me that you know the risks of using the product, but the benefit of using the product seems to outweigh the risks. Now, what I wanna hear from you, because we haven't talked about this, because again, I'm a guy who likes to listen. What are the benefits for you? Like, what do you get out of using this? Um, uh, so, because of the way that I choose to smoke, I definitely have a nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely not appropriate for me to smoke a spliff everywhere I want to smoke a spliff mm -hmm. for many reasons. Um, so this kind of like scratches the itch a little bit in between like when there are appropriate times to sit down and enjoy the products that I like to and the way that I like to. Um, so this is kind of like I can smoke this anywhere. I, I essentially do smoke this everywhere until someone asks me not to, mm. is generally my rule of thumb. Um, when I'm on set uh, for work, I'm usually somewhere for 12 hours at a time. And uh, as a first AD, I need to be on set as much as possible. So it's way easier just to hit this while I'm sitting in a chair or on set versus going outside and having a cigarette. Not that I would have a cigarette, but that would be the other option. Um, yeah, I guess it's just the ease of uh, where you can use it because, yeah, smoking weed, you can't really do that. So I think, you know, what we've learned today is, you know, we've kind of learned some of the negative consequences of e-cigarettes. And we've also learned that sometimes it's used as a bridge, like in Nick. Nick wants to or likes to um, smoke a marijuana product or a spliff, which is half tobacco, half marijuana, whatever, whatever uh, ratio it can be. And so, you know, I think we're going to move to that topic of marijuana, THC, CBD, and vaping those products. And that's going to be in a later episode. And we're going to move to that soon here. But I think it's important to understand that e-cigarettes do have consequences. Do I think it's causing all 380 of the cases? No. Do I think it's caused all six deaths? I don't. Do I think that vaping marijuana products has something to do with it? I do. But it's fairly easy to understand that when you breathe in a substance that is extremely concentrated, that is really, really hot, and that can make other molecules that can cause inflammation and irritation in the airway, it makes it easy to understand that, yeah, there's going to be some negative consequences. It can cause an asthma exacerbation. It can cause certain hypersensitivities that we have had trouble defining as of yet. Again, this is just the beginning, but for me, the major concern is I don't want my daughter going to school and being exposed to an e-cigarette and smoking it just because she thinks it's cool. Thanks for joining us today. Take care.
Patrick, Jamie, Cedric.